We're very excited about Lightning Squad. Our, we did a research study on it this past year. I was privileged to get to work with several schools that were implementing it as a pilot and as part of the research study. And the, re, the, the re, results of the study what, were pretty awesome. Um, what we found was that our treatment group, the kids who got tutored in Lightning Squad, actually performed at double the rate of the control group, those students that didn't get the tutoring. And they performed double in word attack and comprehension, which was very exciting for us. Um, it's very, it's cost effective. You can have up to six students working with a tutor at a time um, in half hour increments. It is a very updated version of our Tutoring with Alfie program. We heard and listened to what people were saying about what they liked and what they would see as improvements in the program. It's a lot easier to use. You don't have to go through Member Center to use it. Um, it's web-based. The, the assessment is much shorter than it used to be. Um, those of you who have experience with tutoring with Alfie might recall that once the kids got at the higher levels, those assessments could get up to 45 minutes long. The new assessments are 5 to 10 minutes, so they go very, very quickly. Um, so just out of curiosity, and it doesn't mean you had to have, but how many of you were able to print out the user's guide. Just raise your hand or thumbs up. Yeah, there we go. OK. So a bunch of you were able to. That's excellent. Perfect. I'm going to be referring to some of those pages. For those of you who did not have a chance to print it out, you might want to jot down the page numbers on Post-it notes so you can put it in your um, guide. Because there are a couple of pages that are pretty important that you'll want to be sure that you access. And I'll point those out as we get through our training. The other thing was, um, <clears throat> how many of you were able to view the videos? Um, the introductory videos. Oh, excellent. Excellent. So you've got a little bit of background knowledge. OK, and some of you weren't able to. I see the thumbs down as well. That's OK. Um, we'll be able to fill you in, and you can also get a chance to view it after, after we're done with this training. They're very short videos. I think the longest one is about four and a half minutes. Um, but it does give you a nice overview, and they're very informational. I would highly encourage you to uh, especially look at the Home Links one after this, because we'll be talking about Home Links toward the end of the session. So um, one of the things that our developers really worked on, we worked with Sesame Street and um, Sirius on making it, improving the tutoring program. And it's much more motivating. So we really worked on gamifying it, um, as well as students having immediate feedback on how they're doing, as well as clues and prompts they need in order to be successful. As I said earlier, it's easy to use. It's completely web-based, so you don't need disks or, or flash drives. And the nice thing is that the accounts are set up by tutor. So if you have five tutors, at your site, then you can get as many as you need to serve those five tutors and whatever support staff need access to the data. Uh, if you have 20 tutors, you can get 20 accounts. All you need to do is sign them up and let us know who they are, what their emails are, and um, how many people. So we'll, I'll show you toward the end of this session what that form looks like and, and how you'll be able to get it. Um, one of the things that is very positive about the program, too, is it's more mature than the Tutoring with Alfie program. And what we found, the, we designed the program for first through third grade students who were reading below grade level. And our schools that were using it and piloting it for us requested to use it with their fourth and fifth graders, and they found it really appropriate. So it's um, more mature at a more mature level. <coughs> the avatars are more mature looking. <coughs> and we continue to have uh, puppets and the cartoons as part of our <coughs> excuse me, 
as part of our um, avatars as well for those students who still like to have them. It's much easier to train, so those of you who are supervising and training tutors, it'll be a lot easier than the old program was. Another nice addition that was much requested was an option for students whose partners are absent. And we have a free play button that gets students whose partners are absent into really appropriate fluency and comprehension activities so that they can go ahead and get value or out of their out of their tutoring time, even though their partner is not there for them to work with. Another great addition is that we now have home links for tutoring for the first grade level. And it's in a Vimeo format. I'll be talking to you about that. Some of you have already had a chance to see the video that, get, that showed you a sample of the home links. We got uh, very good positive feedback about that as well. So as with all of our programs, um, Tutoring with the Lightning Squad is totally based on the reading skills hierarchy. And the intention is to fill in gaps, to fill in student gaps in learning. So as you can see, the whole basis is oral language and vocabulary development. There's a, there are activities around vocabulary development. Letter sounds and phonemic awareness obviously provide the foundation. We have beginning activities that um, scaffold students. And then when they no longer need that scaffold, it's taken away. I'll show you how that's organized in, in a bit. Um, there is a lot of work on decoding and word recognition. Um, there's a word blending activity that lasts throughout the first grade, the first grade level. And fluency, of course, takes place during all levels, and comprehension takes place at all levels. So basically, the program diagnoses where kids are and then really focuses on helping to fill the gap that is preventing them from getting to uh, comprehension skills. There at the the first grade level, of course, borrows the shared stories from Reading Roots. So the first lessons, four through forty eight, borrow from the shared stories and fast track phonics. And it's very nice that they're so nicely aligned. You'll students will need to be able to use their say it fast, break it down skills. They'll need to be able to apply those to the activities. We'll talk about that as we actually explore the activities. They will work on word level blending. They'll also work on writing letters and words, but it will be typing in letters and words. So one of the things to be aware of is um, we do want to do some preliminary keyboarding skills with your, your first graders that are assigned to tutoring. The, the second and third grade level are based on savvy reader out of, um, out of the wings level. Uh, so those will be al aligned and those will, those will be familiar looking stories for the students that need tutoring. So all you need for implementation is the most updated Chrome browser. We are now usable on iPads, iOS 9 and 10. That's a question I get very frequently. Um, on Chromebooks, on any, on any computer, or laptop, or tablet that has, can have an updated Chrome, um, the latest Chrome software. Also, it's very handy and very useful, and if you are someone who works with trains and supervises tutors, I would advise printing out a few of these for them. Um, the, the Tutoring with Lightning Squad User's Guide, it's very, if it, it's very clear cut, it's very explicit. If you forget something that I've talked about today, it shows pictures of what you need to do and how you need to do it in order to get set up and to get going and how to access reports. So. That's a very valuable resource to have. So our goals with Lightning Squad is we want specific reading skills and strategies targeted um, using the tutoring the, the tutoring plans that the program develop, develops to meet the needs of each student. That the tutors will be able to help student partnerships work together with the tutoring program to work on those targeted skills. 
and that the tutors will monitor students very closely as they work, not only to see that they're working in really good supportive partnerships that is functioning in a way that will help both of them learn, but that their time's being spent well on the practice activities and that they are actually progressing to the degree that they need to within the tutoring program. And of course, we expect that students will master those skills and strategies to accelerate their learning and catch up to grade level. And I'll show you ongoing reports that you can use to be monitoring and measuring how kids are doing. So as I said earlier, it's small group, up to six students in three partner pairs, <coughs> working with a tutor for half hour increments at a time. And um, for our SFA schools, we always recommend 30% of first graders, 20% of second graders, and 10% of third graders be tutored. But then a lot depends on your capacity and your populations as well. So students are assigned to tutors uh, based on the current data, usually the roots formal assessment. Then the tutors assess the, the facilitator or whoever is in charge of the tutors assign students that are very alike in scores to particular tu tutors. And then the tutors will assess the students individually. And then that assessment data is used to assign story levels. And the program will do that. I'm going to be demonstrating that for you in just a few minutes. So then the tutor creates the student teams, and the teams will work together, and then of course each quarter the process begins again once, the, um, once all the students are reassessed with their quarterly benchmark assessments. Now the, uh, in the old tutoring with Alfie, our student roles used to be the player and the ref. For tutoring with the lightning squad, it's the reader and the coach. And you can see below that um, to start off with, they're asking, is, are you ready, reader? Are you ready, coach? Before the kids start, press the start button. And we also have some roll cards that the students can, that, that the tutors can use to train the students in their roles. So for the reader role, you can see that looking and listening, completing the activity, and those should look, um, those really support the team cooperation goals that teachers are teaching in the classrooms for this first two weeks of school. Um, if, if the reader needs help, they can click on the question mark for further directions. I'll be modeling all of this for you in just a few minutes. They click on the speaker to repeat the word. They can click on clue for a clue. In some, in some instances, they can click on clue more than one time if they need assistance. And then when they're ready to check and see if their answer is correct, they can click on the check button. Um, and then the coach will, of course, they have to look and listen as well. And they have to listen very, very carefully to their partner's responses to make sure that they remember what their partner's responses were when the check occurs. Um, they can also click on question mark for directions if they don't remember the directions in order to be able to support their partner. They can also click on speaker to support their, their partner with re repeating the word and with clue if they see their partner is stuck. So then their big job is if their partner said it correctly, they click on right. And if they didn't say it correctly, they, get, they click on try again. So students are given in some of the games more than one opportunity to, or more than one attempt at, at the response. Because the key here is, it is for kids to be learning. Um, it's not just a, a testing program. So in order to prepare, your, prepare the teams, we really want to help them focus on two of the team cooperation goals for sure that they um, are focusing on, where they're practicing active listening, so making those connections between what they are working on in their classrooms and what's going on in tutoring is really important, and helping and encouraging each other, as well as completing tasks, which we saw in the previous slide. And the way they can do that is by modeling what does this look like? What does it look like when we work well in partnerships? What do we ask each other? How does the, the, how does the coach help 
help the, the 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 player. So we model these. We pr and if there's another adult there to help model, that's great. Or the tutor can model with a student to show the other students what it should look like. Um, uh, then, of course, they having the students practice the skills and having the tutors give a lot of feedback, a lot of very specific and positive feedback about what they're doing correctly, and also giving them next steps for what's the next step you need to do in order to be successful with this behavior. The other recommendation is to start with one team. So you, we don't want to assign a tutor who's new to the program, has never used it before, six, t six students and three teams all at once. So start with one team, get, learn the program, get that team up and functioning, and then once you've got that first team functioning, add the second team, work with them, get them functioning, and then once you get that second team functioning, add the third team so that the... Um, the tutor has a chance to scaffold their own learning about teamwork and about the program itself. So any questions so far? Go ahead and raise your hand if you have one. OK. What I'd like you to do is in your browser, go to lightningsquad.successforall.org. Now while you're doing that, I do want to explain. I'll be toggling back and forth between the slides. And, and the websites as I, as I demo parts of the lesson for you. But I'll let you know. I know your screen's going to be taken up with your, with your browser and your Lightning Squad. So I'll let you know when it's time to look at this screen that, that, where we've been looking at the PowerPoint slides. So the way we get started is <clears throat> once you've signed up your tutors for their accounts, you give them a heads up that they're going to be getting a letter in the mail from Member Center. And in the, mem in the Member Center email, there will be a link directly to the Tutoring with the Lightning Squad account, and they will need to create their own user word and password. Now, for those of you who are facilitators, administrators, or supervisors of tutors, I would highly recommend creating a spreadsheet um, for of all the usernames and passwords. Sometimes people forget their passwords. They forget their usernames. It's just nice to have it all, all right there. And then basically what will happen is there are two sections within the program. One is the administrative piece, and the other is the actual tutoring piece. I'm going to give you a quick exploration and rundown of the administrative section where you manage students manage teams, create the schedule, and run reports. So um, it'll take me just a second to flick back into my tutoring. So I've got this landing screen right here. This is where my, my computer helps me land. And um, so basically, I click on my name, and it gives me two options. I can go to administrative, or I can log out. And I'm going to go to administrative. <coughs> and my next option is I have students that I need to um, that I need to enter in. So I'm going to enter in Greg Thomas. So I just go directly to those fields. I type in the name. He's a male, and he's first grade, and his teacher is Ms. Allen. And so now that I've got the student information entered, I scroll all the way to the left, and I click on Add New Student. And what you'll see is that our my new student, Greg Thomas, has been added, and now it is prompting me to assess that student. Um, so basically, that is how it goes. Now, I know I need to do some assessments, and I'm particularly anxious to assess Jack Chen. So I'm going to click on and assess. So here's the assessment. 
And with Jack, I know he can read, pretty much he can read his CVC words, his, vowel, or his consonant vowel consonant words. Um, but he still does not have the graphing for the g sound. He doesn't recognize G's. So he tends to not to be able to read those. So following that pattern, on his assessment, he gets dad correct. He gets mad correct. Sit, he can do. Sad. I click right. The tutor cl clicks right for everyone he gets correct. Um, hopefully uh, using a mouse and mouse pad that the student isn't looking at. Um, Matt, you can read Sam. But here is that grapheme he's struggling with that makes the g sound. So he does, he's unable to decipher that word, so the tutor marks that one wrong. But he can do man, and he can do map, and cat, and nap, and cat. Uh, but he can do tack. But he still doesn't know that graphing, so that one's wrong, as is this one, as is this one. And so now, the, that's the assessment. Now, if, you, if there was a problem, if Jack came to school today after having a big fight with his siblings or, you know, his, he, he's, not, he's feeling off, he's not feeling well, and you feel like he really didn't do the best he could, you can click on reassess, and you can reassess him later that, that day or on the next day to give him another opportunity. But if you feel he gave it his best effort and the results were pretty spot on, you can click on done, and it's going to assign him to a level. Now you can see he's been assigned to story one. Um, any questions about that so far? You're going to get a chance to play with it in just a minute. OK, so what you're going to do is this is what your accounts look like. Um, you'll have your demo, and you'll go into administrative. And I want you to um, learn to edit. And entering the fields is pretty easy, but I haven't showed you yet how to edit. So. Here we have these students with all this data in here. And I noticed that two of my students are put down as second graders. And this was in the beginning of the school rush to get everyone in. And they're actually first graders. So I'm going to go to Edit. So we have Lucia Duvoir. I'm going to click on Edit. And you see that what that does is it activates the fields, as well as gives me a deactivate and a delete button. So if we if a student finishes tutoring and they've graduated out, we can deactivate them and still keep their data within our database. If a student moves away and we know they're not going to come back and we don't need their data in our database any longer, then we can totally delete that student. So those are two options we have right there to the right. Um, but uh, again, I need to change their grade levels because it's in error. So I'm going to click on one for Lucia. And now that I've changed it, I'm going to go all the way to the right. And I'm going to click on Save Changes. And so now she's successfully been changed to first grade. I need to do the same thing with Ibrahim down at the bottom. So I'm going to click on Edit. And I'm going to change him to first grade as well. And I scroll all the way to the right. And I save the changes. So now, when they were formally mistakenly put as first graders, they are now second graders. So what I'd like for you to do is, the next assignment we're going to have is I'm going to ask you to edit, get into your demo account, and edit Lucia and Ibrahim to be first graders. And I'll give you a minute to do that. <clears throat> so the next thing you're going to do, remember how I um, did that assessment for Jack Chen. I'm going to ask you to do the same thing with Ibrahim and Lucia. So, but I'm going to give you, I'm going to share with you the script that I had. So, what you're going to do 
is if you're in the room with another person, it would be a really nice opportunity for one partner to be Lucia while the other partner is the tutor, and then switch roles so that part the 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 of being the tutor and being the student is best. If you don't have a partner, if you're all by yourself, you assess both students. We really need that data entered in in order to do the follow-up activities. So make sure that you do the assessments for both students. This is the script. You're going to be assessing Ibrahim and Lucia. And as with Jack, the student I was working with, they both know their CVC words, but they don't know the g sound yet. So they miss and they miss anything else, any four-letter words, any any um, compound words, the ones they can get correct are the three-letter words that are consonant, vowel, consonant. And even in those, they cannot read the ones that have a g in them. So go ahead and do the assessments for Ibrahim and Lucia. I'll give you um, five minutes to do that. So now the next step is to create the teams. So I'm going to go ahead and get back into um, my demo account to show you how to do that. So across across the top, on the from the left hand side over, we've got the tabs. We just finished managing students. We entered students. We assessed students, um, and now we need to manage our teams. So I click on the second tab. Now, I just assessed Jack Chen, and I have another student, Marcella Reynolds, who needs a teammate. And actually, they're not too far apart. One, one passed to story seven, one passed to story nine. And Marcella, it would not hurt her to have a little bit of review. And Jack, I know he he's very strong. So I think you know story eight right in the middle would be good actually for both of them. So I'm going to create the team. And now what you'll see is the program will automatically default to the higher level, but that's not where I want them. So after I create the team, I'm going to change that story as well. So I've clicked on those two buttons by their names. That activates the um, Create Team button. I'm going to click on that. So now we see below I have Jack Chen and Marcella Reynolds. But I didn't want them on story nine. I want them on story eight. So I click on edit. And that creates a drop down menu for what story they're on. I'm going to put them on story eight. And I'm going to save the new story. So go ahead and get into your program. Click under manage teams. And create a team for Lucia and Ibrahim and put them on story eight as well. And I'll give you a minute to do that. All right, let's go ahead and move on to the next section. The next one tab is the third one, and that's the scheduler. Now, as you can see, we have nothing up here. But it's very easy to get started, because you'll click to add a time slot. And I want my first time slot to be before school because I know a lot of kids arrive early, and uh, my, some of my tutor kids come on the early bus. Um, so I know I can get them in early. So now I've created a time slot. Now, when, you click, when I click on Team, all of the teams that need to be assigned a time slot show up in the, in the drop-down menu. And I, I think you know that before, school, that before school time slot I really like. So I'm going to add another group. Remember, I can have up to three partnerships per tutor. And I have one tutor assigned to my before group, before school thing. So I'm going to put in two more groups. And then I'm going to add some time slots after SFA. So I'm thinking maybe from 10.15 to 10.45. So I'll add another time slot there. So now I have two time slots and um, six, six groups to play with. So I'm going to have Jack and Marcella come in before school. I'm going to have Patel and Foster come in before school. 
but I know that Cruz and Stein just never, that sometimes they're even tardy, so I'm not going to have them come in until later. Um, so all of my teams are now assigned. So in your program, go ahead and assign, create a slot and assign every team that is in a drop down to a slot. And I'll give you three minutes to do that. And we have a Donna, did you have a question? Yes, I do. I noticed that What's the time slot. Hello? Yeah, I hear you. Okay. Okay. I noticed that the time slots are um, a half hour increment. Um, 8.39 yes. o'clock. Suppose, um, you know, our schedule doesn't allow for that specific time. Suppose I need an 8.10 um, start time. How would I do that? I've, yeah, I see. Let me take a look. You should be a, it, it is given in 15 minute increments. Um, would the 15 minute increments work for you? Well, no. I think last year what we did was we allowed five minutes in between each team for transition. Oh, I see. I see. So we, we had to pick up the children at their class and return the children to their class. So we needed that five minutes. Yeah. Um, you know what? I'll give that. I'll give that feedback back to our development team. But for right now, it it is just in fifteen uh, half an hour to fifteen minute increments on the clock. Um, but the nice thing about this is, you do need to have kids assigned to a time slot within the program because that activates their tutoring accounts. Um, but you don't necessarily have to follow these schedules. You can create your own schedules as long, but as long as you have the student teams entered into something in here, um, you can you can do it. I see the issue with the five minute time slots, and I'll get back to the development team to see if there's something that can be done about that. Yes, I, I think that would really be helpful. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Good question. Thank you. So was everybody able to create their time slots? So we've, we've taken a look at the scheduler. Now let's take a look at the report, at the reports. We have administrative reports and we have student reports. So the administrative reports depends on your level of permissions. And permissions are, for instance, a tutor can see their own student data, but they can't see anybody else's, which is appropriate, especially with the FERPA laws. The school reports are only accessible by school-wide um, persons who are responsible for data, such as the facilitator, the literacy coach, um, the person supervising the tutors, the, the vice principal, the principal, whoever has a legitimate need and permission from the school to have access to all student data. And then, of course, there's a district roll-up report. So if you've got a district-wide implementation of tutoring, who your curriculum people, whoever, your, your superintendent, your assistant soups, whoever is in charge of or needs access to that data, they can get school-wide roll-up reports at a district level as needed. And I'm going to be showing you samples of those in just a minute. The other type of report you can get is a student report. And these student reports are great for sending out to parents. Um, you can attach them to report cards. You can um, also give them to homeroom teachers as well as SFA teachers so that they know what progress the kids are making in the tutoring program. And I'm going to show you what those look like. So here's what the individual student report looks like. And it, it'll, it, when it comes home to parents, it tells them what stories the students are working on and some comprehension questions that parents can use to spur their, their child talking about the story. And then they, it, there's a list of words that the students have passed on a tutor check that they get to read to their parents. And also, there are, there's another set of words there that the students can write. So parents can have their, their children write these words for them uh, at a, successfully. 
And at the very bottom is a progress report over time. The gold bar is where the student is. The red bar is what grade level is over the year. And that blue line in the middle is where they should be by the middle of the year. The left-hand side is indicates what is the level of correct words per minute. And the intersection is of correct words per minute with what story level they're working on. So um, down in the bottom axis, you'll see the different story levels. And it'll indicate where the student is. The tutor summary report um, shows some really important data. Now, now, some of the data in this report is kind of wonky. We weren't able to uh, generate this out of legitimate data um, because we, we were getting it ready for the user's guide for publication before the, the study was done. But what's important is to look across the top to see what kind of data there is. So if you look, of course, the student name and then the start date. When did they actually start tutoring? And then how many weeks were, have they been in tutoring? And what's the total number of sessions? And the nice thing is it shows you the average number of sessions each student attends per week. Now, that's important because you might not be seeing the kind of progress you would expect for a student getting tutored. And then you look in at the data and you find, well, you know, they're only attending two to three sessions a week. What's going on? In order to get the full impact of the program, they need to be attending four to five uh, sessions a week. So let's figure out, is it attendance? Is it student attendance? Is it tutor attendance? Are they forgetting you know, to, to, to go to tutoring? What's going on? So that can help with some problem solving. It shows the starting level. It shows the current level. So you can see what kind of growth they've had over time. Um, it also shows what the year-end target is so that you can see how close they're getting to grade level, as well as their current correct words correct per minute and what the year-end target for correct words per minute um, so that you can see how close they are to a, approaching achievement goals. Now, the rate of progress is a good one to, to be monitoring. Um, Generally, in the course of events, we would want students to pass a tutor check once or tw twice a week. So if they're on that rate, they will get two pluses. That means that they're, they're progressing at a really good rate, a solid rate, and at a rate that will help eventually get them up to grade level. If there's only one plus, that means they're still progressing, but maybe not as rapidly as we would like for them to be. Um, and so we might look into that. A question mark tells us there, there really is something going on here. The student isn't progressing. So what's happening and what do we need to do to problem solve it? Um, so the, and the, 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 the school re summary report shows this data collated by school. So all, right now, the tutor summary, summary report is a tutor's report of all their students. The school level report shows lists each tutor and all of their data from all their students is collated. Then the district level report shows all the schools and their, all of their school-wide tutoring data is collated. Um, so that is what the, the reports look like. Now, for the activities, we're going to actually get into um, tutoring activities. But if you need any information on any of that administrative part we just covered, it's all in the first few pages of the user's guide. So from pages 2 through 11 is the administrative part. And it will show you in detail how to do everything that we, are, that we just covered in the training. Now, the next page that I think is important to look at in the user's guide, if you have it there and available, if you don't, that's OK. But you might want to note it with a post-it, because it gives you an overview of these activities and some general information that's pretty nice to have and recall. Because let's face it, you're not going to remember everything we talked about today during this two-hour workshop. So the user's guide will be extremely helpful to you. 
So the activity overview, the power reader, is a, an activity that gets them, it's a prime the pump type of activity. It's one that helps build their confidence because they're reviewing, they're doing fluency activities based on stories that they've passed already during the tutor checks. And they get to choose which story they're going to read as a partnership. So they get to hear the fluent reading being modeled, and then they get to practice reading, and they get a timed read. The letter launch, this is only stories 4 through 15 at the very beginning levels. Remember earlier I told you it's a scaffold. So we really focus on the letter and let letter sounds um, for the first 15, store, 15 stories. And by then, they have enough letter sounds to, and, and enough knowledge about word level blending that they don't need the letter launch activity any longer. So we remove the scaffold. And then they really start working on the, on, in the, continue working in the word blender. So letter launch, the kids practice saying the letter or combinations of letter sounds. And they, they're given clues for help. We'll be looking at this in a minute. For Word Blender, the teams practice their word blending and are provided with clues for help. So Word Blender is where the kids need to apply their say it fast skills that they've been learning in the classroom. In Super Speller, teams practice spelling the words that they hear. So there are words dictated by the, by the game, by the um, program. And then students need to find the letters that sound out those words. And this is where they use their segmenting skills that they learn in the Roots program, where they break apart the sounds in the word in order to be able to spell them. WordQuest, the students get to see a little video that emphasizes the, the vocabulary, the new vocabulary associated with this story. And they get to do some vocabulary activities related to the story that they're working on. And after these five activities have been successfully completed in order, then they will deactivate and StoryQuest will activate. Because the students cannot do StoryQuest until they've successfully passed and done the, the previous five activities. Then StoryQuest will activate and the teams will read the story and they'll answer, comprehensions, uh, they'll answer comprehension questions about it. So let's, let's go ahead, and I'm going to get back into the program. <clears throat> so I've been working in administrative, and I need to go back to home. In the upper left-hand corner, I'm clicking on home to get out of administration. And then I need to, the students will need to learn how to select their team. They should be able to recognize their, their names. So we have Jack and Marcella working. Now the first thing they're going to do as a team is they get to choose their team color. They both decide that they like green, so they click on green. Now Jack's going to choose his avatar. And here's his avatar. And Marcella, she loves unicorns. So she's going to choose the unicorn avatar. And now they're done. So after they finish choosing their avatars and the team color, they click on done. And it gets us to the landing page. Now you can see at the bottom they're on story number eight. Now let's say Jack is absent, so Marcella is on her own. She can click this free play button in the lower right-hand corner and still have meaningful activities, learning activities to do that will help her with the tutoring. One of the things we have to train the kids to do is to go down the columns. I know uh, instinctively we want to go right to left, but in this program we need to go down. So they start with Power Reader, then go to Letter Launch, then Word Blender, then they do go back up to the top of the next column and do Super Speller and Word Quest. And as I pointed out earlier, Story Quest is grayed out until they complete the other activities. So let's take a look at Power Reader. Here it's asking us, are we ready to go? We click the Start button, and the first thing they get to do is to choose a story. And we'll choose sto Show and Tell. Show and Tell, story by Laura Burton Rice. 
Illustration by Susan Now a couple of the features to notice is see the bonus meter down below? That's where it's going to show the points that they earn. They can earn points as individuals as they su successfully complete the activities. And if they both successfully complete the activity, they get bonus points as a team. So it's an incentive to work well together as teammates so that both of them can pass. And then if we forget how to do the activity, we can click on the question mark and it gives us verbal directions. So the students click on start. I am dead. Sad Sam is a dog. I like Sad Sam. So the first part of the activity is they get to hear fluent reading being modeled. Now it's their chance to start practicing. So we click on that and down below you will see that Jack has on the coach's hat, he has on the coach's shirt, and he has the whistle. And we see that Marcella is ready to read, all bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. So Marcella reads, I am dad. And then she clicks next. Now she becomes the coach, and Jack is the reader. So Jack reads, Sad Sam is a dog. I like Sad Sam. And then Jack clicks next. So now it's Marcella's turn. She reads the page. You can see they switch roles as they switch pages until they get to page six. And it clearly demarks who is the coach and who is the reader, which is, is really nice to bring that level of clarity. So once they finish, they click next, and now it's time for them, for them to take turns doing a timed read. So when Marcella's ready to start reading, she starts the timer and then reads, I am dad, sad Sam is a dog, I like sad Sam. She reads the next page, then she reads the next page, and the next page, till she gets to the end. When she's finished, she clicks done. And her coach clicks on the last word that she read. And look, she got five points. Now it's Jack's turn. So he hits start the timer. And now it's his turn to read the story. And he reads through the story. And he clicks done. And his coach clicks on the last word he read. And not only do they get the 10 points apiece, but they get that extra 5 points as a bonus score. Congratulations! What a team! You've just been crowned Power Reader Champions! And... Once they've successfully completed the activities, they're bounced back onto the landing page. And so the next activity is letter launch. Ready reader, ready coach, we hit start. Now, it's Jack's turn, and this letter just appeared, and he thinks it says P. So he says P. And then he clicks on check to see if he's right or not. Now, it's really important that Marcella is listening to what he said so she can compare what he said to what the program said. And the program said P as well, so she clicks on right, that he got it correct, and he gets a point. Now, he's not sure about this one. He kind of thinks he has an idea, but he thinks it might help him to have a clue. So he clicks clue. And the key card shows up. Elephant, elephant, eh, 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 I think it says eh. So he clicks check. Eh. And Marcella clicks that, yeah, he got it right. He got it right that time. Now this one, um, Jack says eh. And he hits check. Oh, oh it's oh. And Marcella clicks try again. And it gives him a clue. And he says, oh, oh, that's not if for insect, that's oh for leg. I think it says leg. And he hits check. Oh. And he's right. 
Now this one, he doesn't remember, so he asks for a clue. Oh, donkey. I think that's d for donkey. Oh. Huh. So then it tells Marcella that it's time to go on to the next letter. And then I, Jack, I think I need a clue. I'm still not sure. Parasol. It's got to get upside down. Umbrella is unusual. Okay, so it gave me the alliteration phrase that's used in the key card. Upside down. Oh, it's an umbrella. Umbrella. Uh, uh, umbrella. Uh, I think it's uh. Clicks for check. And he gets that right. So you can see how the even if they they're not strong on a particular sound, the activities allow them opportunities for practice and gives them prompts and reinforces their learning. So each student will get the opportunity for ten sounds, and of course, those are sounds that are programmed into the that basically are based on their assessments and their interactive work with the program. Now, they're not done with this activity, but it might be the end of the period or there's a really good reason for their leaving. They cannot leave it on their own until it's completed. But if, the, if for some reason you need to get them out of the program, the tutor has to type in their password to get out and get back into the, the landing page. So select your team. I want to get back into Jack and Marcella. We just finished letter launch. Let's go to Word Blender. So we're going to start. So this is where I use my, my Say It Fast skills, my blending and Say It Fast skills. Now, so in Roots, we use blending decks and blending cards. Um, to help them learn how to do it. But um, Jack is not sure, so he needs a clue. What happens with the first clue? It spreads them out like you would with a blending deck. And he thinks, well, I need another clue. Hip. So it'll give the individual sounds, but it's up to Jack to say it fast and say, so he needs to sound it out. Tip, tips, tips. I think it says tips. Tips check. Tips. And he's right. I think it says pan, pan, pan. And he's right. And at cat. He's correct. Uh, nodes. Nod. Oh, so Marcella was listening carefully, so she knows he needs to try it again. And it automatically supports a, a clue. And then here's Jack. Nodes. 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 Again, nodes. Nod. So try again. Not. So it scaffolds it for him. It gives him a clue and it models for him what he needs to do. Nods. Oh, that's not. Oh, that's odd. Nods. 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 And he's right. Now, because he needed a couple of clues, he didn't get the points for that activity. But he is given opportunity to um, get it right. And he can sound out id, did, and he gets it right. So that's, and then when he's done with his 10, it will be Marcella's turn to do 10. So that's, that's what that activity looks like. The next one is Superspeller. And this is the one where, especially for beginning first graders, you need to work with them a little bit to show them where to find things on the keyboard. But we'll click Start. And the program dictates a word that's at their appropriate level. And let's say they didn't hear it. They can click on the speaker as many times as they want. 
pin. 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 Oh, it says pin. pin. Okay, I think pin. that's... So they type in, um, what says, ah. so if they type in the wrong letter by accident, it gives them a prompt. So what says, ah, ah, uh, and I forgot what the word was. Pats. 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 What says, oh, it's like snake, not like zebra, so. What says milk? What says eh? What says eh? What says eh? So it'll continue to give a student the opportunity to look at it's and look for the time. Get ready to switch. And the ni another nice feature is it's very clear and very explicit during these activities when it when when it's another person's turn. Um, so that's basically what this activity looks like. And now the next activity is WordQuest. Now WordQuest um, shows a video. So I'm going to let you play with that one on your own because it sometimes goes a little um, wonky trying to broadcast it over the internet to you. Um, but what this one does is it shows the video which reinforces the, um, the concepts and the vocabulary they're working on and prepares the students for a close activity where it has clues. So when you're practicing with this activity, Take a look at how many prompts and clues the kids get to help them be successful and to help them learn. Now, the feature of this is, is it's about vocabulary and beginning comprehension. It is not about decoding. So they can have any part of it read to them. They can have the closed sentence read to them. They can have the vocabulary words read to them. And there are also little graphics, little picture cards that they can click on to. So if it's a, if, if the word is picture, there's a picture of a picture. If the word is cat, there's a picture of the word cat. Okay. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to give you 10 minutes to explore those five we looked at. And I will check in with you at the end of 10 minutes. Um, you're going to work with Lucia and Ibrahim, the team that you created, and um, just explore those first five activities. So we'll go ahead and take 10 minutes to do that. OK, let's go ahead and go on to the next activity. So as you can see, all the previous activities are grayed out, and it's time to go to Story Quest. And this time, it's on story number 49 rather than story 8. So you're going to get a chance to see it at a higher level. So it's Ready Reader, Ready Coach. We hit Holly start. The Parrot. Story <coughs> by Sam R. McCall. Illustration by James Bravo. So we click the start, and we can see who the reader is and who the coach is. So the reader reads the page. And, and this section, by the time they get up to this level, they will have learned how to scroll. Because if they don't scroll down, they're going to miss a line. So we have to train them to watch, look for the scrolling function once it starts appearing. Once he finishes reading, he clicks on question. So what do Molly and the parrot do at the beach? They look at the ocean. They watch the boats go by. They surf. Well, he remembers from reading his story that it's A and B. And he clicks that, and he gets that correct. So now we switch. And we go back to the story. And the reader hits start. And now the other student gets to read it. 
and scrolling down. And now they get the question. Molly and the parrot will probably, and she thinks it's live at the park. Oh, that's not right. Okay, she thinks they're going to stay at the beach. So they get an opportunity for two incorrect responses. And now it goes, they'll each get an opportunity to read page two. And now, and you can see that that's the, the comprehension activity that they will get. So um, it can go from, from five up to higher pages as students increase their abilities. They will get higher and higher. Um, we don't have time to do it now, but, but I wanted to make sure we had enough time for you to be able to see what happens with the tutor check. So I'm going to show you. As soon as this black and white flag appears in the upper left-hand corner, your tutors, or those of you who are going to be tutors, you need to know that that's your cue to right away test the students. That's the indicator for the tutor check. And what that means is that the students have passed all of the activities and are now ready to be assessed. So, the, uh, so that the kids don't get into it by accident, the tutor has to type in their, word, their, their password. And this should look familiar to you. So um, our student gets this one correct. And he gets this one correct. That, that one, he can sound out part of it, but doesn't recall the rest. This is that one, but he gets this one correct, and now it's time to assess the other the other student, and she gets that correct, and she gets that correct, and that one. And so now that they both pass the the word section, they each get the opportunity to have a timed read. So when they're ready to read to start reading, the tutor clicks on go, and this is going to time them. So he reads until he's finished, and then he clicks done when he's done. And the tutor clicks on the last word he read. And it will now generate a question about the text. So why did Tommy and his friends climb the magnolia tree? And <clears throat> this is a question the student can answer in their own words. And as long as they get it correct, the tutor can mark it correct. And now the tutor will assess the other student. And this is a timed read. And this is what generates the scores in the reports. So it's very important that, this, that the tutor is accurate with this. And then it generates the question, what did dad tell Tommy and his friends about the beast? And she uh, as t gives the correct response as well. And so the tutor clicks on correct. And then it looks at, OK, did this student pass the tutor check? So the tutor has a final say. Maybe they read all the words correctly, but it was so slow that they're going to need some work on fluency or something, something was amiss. So the tutor has a final say. But in general, most of the time, it's, it's a yes. So he, that student passed, and so did both students pass. So there's a little celebration built in. And then it goes right away to the prize spot. And the prize spot is where the students get to spend all of those points they've been earning. So let's say. Um, I want, they decide they want to spend 10 of their points on this one. And it's a little video. I love peanut butter, but not being stuck in it. It's about to explode, and I can't crack the code to get out. Help me. <laughs> My brother said, oh, I prefer a huge turnip to peanut butter. My brother said, I prefer a huge turnip to peanut butter. Oh. 
So that's one of the simpler, um, the simpler activities, of course. And then once they finish that one, there, there, there's a game. You see this with the, with the, with the joystick. Um, there are a variety of videos and activities. They last for, <clears> through these, these activities last for three stories and then they change. Now to explore Tutor Check and Prize Spot, are there any questions about the tutoring program itself? And and how it's done is it does it did it seem pretty straightforward to everyone? There's another question there from Shauna. Will data follow the student if they move to a different tutor? Yes, the data should follow, and there's a way to transfer. Um, I I think it's in the user's guide, but if it's not in the user's guide, all you have to do is call Member Center. Um, but the but but there are ways to. Um, have the data follow the student. And Member Center is your friend. So if, if like for instance, a glitch comes up or you've used the user's guide and you still don't understand it or you can't get something to function, they are so eager and ready and willing to help out. Um, so all you have to do is to contact your regular Member Center support person and they'll be able to help you out with it. So if, if you need to transfer students from one tutor to another, if you need to import or export data, um, they can walk you through the process. They're a great team and very supportive. Thank you, Carla. Um, and somebody, Tricia, do you have your hand raised for a question or a comment? Okay. It's all, all, six all six and 30 minutes. Yeah. Oh, that's a good, that's a good question. Um, if they have successfully completed an activity fully, it should be grayed out, and then the activities that they didn't complete, they'll start over. They'll start over again with. Um, but it, for a lot of the activities, it will to complete all the activities. A lot of times, it will take more than one day. That was a good question. Oh, Tammy, good question. What happens when both children don't know the answer? Well, there are enough prompts and enough reinforcement in the program that it will give them clues and then it will give them, it will actually give them the answer. So it gives them multiple opportunities to practice and then when they come back to the program the next day, they'll know a little more and hopefully will remember from the previous day and they'll have more opportunities to practice the next day. So good questions. Um, but basically it's built in. There's a lot of scaffolding. There's a lot of reinforcement. There are a lot of clues so that kids have a lot of help built right in. And then as, as the tutors can be observing the students to see, well, what do I need to give them extra support with. So let's say they're really struggling with the blending. Um, the tutors might borrow a blending deck from, from the Roots program and actually physically practice blending with the blending deck and take a few moments to do that um, with the students before going back to the program. So you can certainly supplement what's going on in the computer with really live um, live instruction. And it's nice to access the roots materials to do that. Did it, so do you feel like I answered your question? And this was a question from Tammy. Okay, thank you. So the, the next thing we talked a little bit about are the home links. Yes, a question? Was there a question? I don't see one. Okay. Yes, Tricia asked, why did they choose to use the savvy reader passages? Oh, good question. Because like we use the shared stories, because that's what the students are working on, we wanted the tutoring to be curriculum aligned so that the students would experience success in, in the classrooms. So the students that are reading below grade level, um, the tutoring is right at where they are reading, so these are the things that they're probably most likely working on to some degree in their classrooms, but at least it's at the correct level of difficulty as they've been diagnosed within the program. Does that make sense? I hope it does. Ah, yes. 
um, not on the assessment, but in the activities. And that gives the students multiple opportunities um, to, for modeling and for practice. So yes, that was a good question. So in some of the activities, the comprehension questions are repeated, but not in the, the, the assessments. So for the home links, one of the things that was designed with the home links was that it's in a Vimeo format, which is similar to YouTube, so that it can be played on any device that's in the home. Um, we know we have a lot of students that come from high poverty areas, and a lot of times they won't have a computer or an iPad or a tablet in their home. So they, any, if any adult in the house has a smartphone, they can access the home links to do these at home with their, with their families. I highly recommend that if you haven't had a chance to see it, you look at the, watch the video that's in the link. And another important page I want to point out to you in your guidebook is page, the page, page 47 that has um, the certificates that need to be printed out. So tutors need to have access to these certificates. They should be in any tutoring area where a tutor can just grab one at when they've finished working with the student for that for the day. And they after they do it after a student successfully passes a tutor check, that that is supposed to trigger the tutor to grab one of these certificates and write the number of the story that they just passed so that it goes home and the parents click on the Vimeo link and they look for the story number that the student just passed in order to do the activities with the students. And this takes a little training of the parents. So you will want to either introduce it during a back to school night, an open house, or through letters home. Um, so there are, as I've already mentioned, roots materials. You can use the alliterative phrases the key cards, um, the, the cue cards, uh, tutor talk prompts, you can use all of these. There are lots of resources provided. And there are also a, a, a several items, such as the tutor talk prompts and the tutoring with lightning squad guide, those are, and the roll cards, they're all available on online resources. This is what the form looks like that you need to fill out. Once your school signs a contract that says you want to do the Lightning Squad, this is the form that your school fills out. And then anyone who's listed will get an account. But what's important is to get that, the email and what their role is, because the role will determine what the permissions are, who has access to what data. And I know a lot of districts are really worried about FERPA laws right now, so this controls that level of access. Another, the, the last key point I wanted to make was about monitoring progress. So pe those of you who are in the group who supervise tutors, um, one of the things you want to really do is to check in every couple of weeks at a minimum on student progress. How are they doing? Um, are, they, are all students progressing at a rate that's going to accelerate their learning and growth? Um, are tutors having opportunities to meet? Do, do we have component meetings for tutors? What are the ongoing coaching opportunities? Say if they're having kids that are struggling with being partners or they need a little boost in teaching kids how to uh, say it fast or break it down or how to really assist kids that are stuck. Um, because we don't want to get to the end of the quarter and find the kids did not make the growth they wanted to. That's just heartbreaking. So those uh, a, a check-in at least every couple of weeks, um, going professional development for the tutors, that's all really important. So let's see, I saw something popped up in the chat room. Are there any questions that we haven't, that we haven't addressed? Dan, I see you answered one. Are there any last questions? Okay. Well, you guys, thank you all so much. It was a pleasure to get to spend time with you.